Now we'll take a look at activity two, uh, which is similar to what we did last um, last week. Again, you're going to create more details in AutoCAD. Go to the folder and choose four to six more. So you're going to have, you know, eight to ten of these done by the time you're done with this little portion of the HVAC. Uh, put those into Revit, much like we've done before. So you don't need a video to do that. But we're going to create some new sheets now for our HVAC supply plan. And then uh, these... Uh, details are going to go uh, continue to fill out your MEP 401 page your M401 and if you need some more room do M402 that should just say M not MEP um, so you can do those but what you haven't seen how to do yet is how to make an HVAC supply air plan so let's take a look and see what one would look like. Here is a typical supply air plan. And I've done one of the areas. Usually you'll split this up. So you're going to want to do one of these for your lobby, one for your admin area, and one for your um, one for the manufacturing area. So you can see I've made it about the size where I can get one, two, three on this D size sheet and there's some room down here if I need some more some more items but but this should work out just fine and let's see what's on it first of all I've made these lines and I'll show you how to do that okay normally you see these as lines that's called a P and ID piping and instrumentation diagram uh, that's often done you could leave it as the other as the um, um, uh, instead of this course view you could have the uh, intermediate view but but I like this for what we're doing you'll also see that I've got a little loop around it, it says that this piece of piping is 14 inch diameter with an elevation of 20 and it's gonna carry 370 I could put this one in that would have the higher also okay I also see that this is this this little line going up and down. This is a symbol for a vertical piece of ducting and that that is 8 inch diameter and the end of it is going in at 19.1 underneath here. Okay, and then we've got our diffuser, which I'm saying it's a supply. It's an 8 by 8 duct and it's it's at 11 feet and it's going to do 370 CFM. And I'm only pointing to one of them. Okay, and then this one over here has 740 in it going through it. 740 CFM and it's 20 inch ducting at 20. Okay, so, um, so that's what you want on your labels. Oh, and then I also have my mechanical unit here. Um, these fittings are sometimes done and sometimes not. We're going to leave them out for now because that's something that's likely going to change when the um, when the detailer gets a hold of it. And then we want approximate spacing. Approximate. Just to give a basic idea. Okay, And, and I see that this one should also come down to this wall. Right, so you want to give these approximate spacing. So let's see how we did that. I went into my, oops, I better save that. I went into my Mech One view, and this one I could rename. Maybe this is my lobby. Okay, whichever one it is. Okay, and then um, I did my crop view. And I just cropped it down to the part of the building that I wanted to see. There's my crop view, which you're all familiar with. And there's a few interesting things here. How did I get this to show up so clean? Because it's really like 10 feet, 2 and 15 six feet, or something like that. So if I click on it, I made a new type. To do that, 
I duplicated my existing one and I called it depth dims. And I left everything the same except for my primary unit. And I undid the project settings so that I could just do feet to zero decimal places. And then I added the foot symbol. So you can do that and just call it duct dims. And then you can apply that to all of these. And you get a nice, clean, approximate set of dimensions. Let's see how I got these pipings to show the way I did. I came down to my detail level and I made it coarse. I had originally mod modeled it in medium, but I made it coarse. So there's medium. There's fine. Can't tell a difference. And there's coarse. And this is how most most places show a plan like this. Okay, so that's how I got it to show there. And then let's take a look. I put in my ducting tag. Let's see what I had to modify. So it didn't look like this when I first started. So if you click on it and go to edit the label, you can see what I did is I entered diameter, end, middle, elevation, and flow. And then I put a break on each of these. That allows it to go to a separate line. And then I put a prefix so that I would know diameter. And I had to put a space or it will just say diameter and just go right on to it. And I wanted a space. That says diameter, space, space. That says elevation, space, space. And that's what I picked on that one. And then when I loaded it in, it comes out correct. And then also what I did is I edited this leader type be a loop 1 16th and I could have been a, done a bigger loop if I wanted to some places want a big loop some places want a small loop um, but that's how you do that and it shows that one there now some people would go and and put this ducting in too which you might feel like doing if you can get it to fit nicely You have to find a spot where you can get it. Kind of fit okay. There we go. That would fit. It's close. I could get it to fit by playing around a little bit more. And that would not be bad. It shows what the... Um, Shows what the uh, CFM is in this little segment right here. And that's going to be important to know at one point. Okay. Some um, HVAC detailers would say, well, that's good for that one. But this is too big. And they might actually make you neck this this one down here. Okay. It depends on what, what their design parameters are. Okay. And then, of course, I was able to pick this little piece of vertical ducting and so I've got all of those identified okay I might even put one here shows all of the all of the flow through there but this is good for now and then let's take a look and see how I made my supply diffuser say all of this so once you put it in there you'll double click on it again and click on it and we'll see that I did a family name without a break and then the size and I put a dash in front of the size and then I put a break and then I put the elevation so those were the three that were on that and then this is a separate one and I just left it alone All right so that's what I that's what I put in there and when I load that into the product project I get it to look like this. Now you only need to do one of these and which one you do depends on, you know, where things are arranged and how they look. It'll be up, up to you. Now there was one thing that I noticed. I do need to um, put this and what happened here. I got that one off somehow. Rid of that one get that one a little bit better. I'm going to go from here to here. 
there we go and you can see I've done a fairly decent job of getting this evened out 10 feet to the wall versus 11 19 in between this one's four feet away from the edge so somebody could actually walk around and maybe get to it if they needed to do um, if they needed to do maintenance and this is in a corner where it will be well supported the roof can be easily um, uh, made stronger in this corner to hold the weight of my air handler so there we go that's how that's how it looks and you'll do that for each one and then when you come down to your sheets it will show up correctly for you so that's how you do that the the sheet and everything else i think you know how to do and so enjoy creating a very nice plan set for your hvac